Vertigo Recovery Doctor, I'm Dr. Kevin Smith. I'm a vestibular physical therapist, and today I'm talking about chronic dizziness after an acute episode of vertigo or spinning. So it's one thing to experience some sudden spinning sensation, but what happens if you're left with this kind of chronic dizziness or just kind of left off with this imbalance or um, you know dizziness feeling off that just doesn't go away? Um, we're going to talk about a recent study that came out looking at what the biggest factors are in contributing to chronic dizziness after those acute episodes, because most people do recover. So what happens when you don't recover or what's leading to, um, what are the biggest factors in preventing recovery after that acute episode of dizziness? So they're talking about typically a unilateral vestibular hypofunction or um, they're, they titled it an acute unilateral vestibulopathy, uh, pretty, pretty much the same thing, um, but a weakness on one side of the inner ear. So you have two vestibular systems that help with your balance and uh, your stability. And if you get some kind of um, inflammation in the inner ear, like a vestibular neuritis, that can weaken one side and cause a weakness on one side. Um, Oftentimes, this is, this is experienced by a sudden spinning sensation that lasts hours to even a couple days, uh, probably accompanied with nausea and vomiting, not feeling well, imbalance. And once that spinning stops, you're still left with some dizziness, particularly uh, when you move your head quickly because that, that um, reflex between the inner ear and the eyes isn't functioning as quickly as it should. Um, You'll also probably be left with some imbalance, most often when you're turning your head or when your eyes are closed because you can't utilize that inner ear system as well as you used to. And so it's causing some dizziness, it's causing some balance issues after that dizziness has stopped. Um, now, most people do recover back to normal, some people don't. And what are the biggest factors in uh, contributing to that? Uh, so let's take a look at this research, this new research article that came out um, and see what they found. So the biggest factors that they found that contributed to chronic dizziness are one, psychological factors. So these would be level, high levels of anxiety, high levels of depression, or fear avoidance. And what we mean by fear avoidance is that they're avoiding activities that may make them or may trigger their dizziness. Um, these were strongly associated with chronic dizziness after an acute episode. So after acute episode of spinning, um, these, are, these are some of the factors that have contributed to uh, leading towards chronic dizziness. Now the second thing is a visual dependence um, on, for your balance. So what this means, and it's very common, um, it's actually kind of what the brain does after you have some kind of disruption to your sensory systems, it's gonna depend more on another one that it can trust. So it can't trust your inner ear anymore. It's gonna depend more on the, on the visual, vision, on the visual system for your stability, which makes sense, right? Um, now, what happens is that people get stuck in that mode of not trusting their inner ear again and end up just trusting their, their vision, and the vision can be very misleading. So if you're in a crowded area or a busy visual environment, um, it may be difficult to find stability, to find a point to focus on to keep your balance. And so it's easily thrown off. And especially if you're in a dark or dimly lit area, you can't really use your vision that much. And so that may throw you off balance um, or make you feel a little bit dizzy if not all your sensory systems are working together as they should. And if you're over relying on your dizziness, on your vision for your balance and not trusting your inner ear again or doing exercise, trust your inner ear again, then that will can lead to uh, a more chronic dizziness, particularly looking at um, conditions like 3PD, persistent postural perceptual dizziness. This is a, a big uh, factor in pe people who are experiencing that. And then the third indicator that you may be, um, you're more likely to experience chronic dizziness after an acute episode of vertigo is your balance performance 10 weeks after the onset of your episode. So let's say you had the spinning 10 weeks later, you're still having issues with your balance, you're more likely to have a chronic dizziness problem. And this makes sense as well. If not all your sensory systems are working together, your brain can't make sense of what's happening, then you're probably gonna be a little bit off balance too. So what can you do for this? Um, you know, it's, it's great to keep in mind that, or what can you do for, to prevent this chronic dizziness? 
from happening. Uh, it's great to keep in mind that it's not just an inner ear problem. It's also how the brain is processing all the sensory information. Now, if you have any of those psychological factors like anxiety, depression, uh, fear avoidance, these can put you into a heightened state where your brain's not going to be able to adapt. So your brain needs to be able to be calm and relaxed in order to adapt and um, do vestibular exercises to trust your inner ear again, to reorganize and um, attain that what we call neuroplasticity, where your brain's able to change and make, make um, adaptations. So these are things that need to be assessed or need, sorry, need to be addressed. Um, I highly suggest that if you are experiencing any of those issues, that you do some kind of cognitive behavioral therapy or um, see a psychotherapist um, to address these issues, mental health professional, um, because you're going to be much more successful in recovering your from dizziness and balance disorders if you're going to do a multifaceted approach, because it's not just an inner ear problem right now if you are experiencing these things. It's also a mental health issue, and it's and it's understandable, you know, experiencing vertigo is scary. And so that can kind of, that can really throw a wrench in your life. It can, um, I, I understand you wanting to avoid things, but it, um, to prevent triggers of dizziness, but it's not going to be optimal for your health and your well-being going forward. So it's really important to get those addressed. Make sure you see a mental health professional. Um, now, the second thing, the visual dependence as well. That is something that we really address in physical therapy. That's what vestibular exercises are for, to decrease your dependence on your vision and make you trust your inner ear again. So your brain is going to adapt for that weakness in the, on, on that one side. And what, how we do that is we kind of force it to, by doing vestibular exercises, making it less, making your body less dependent on your vision and more dependent on your inner ear for your balance. So you feel more grounded and stable um, and it helps to reorganize the brain. And there's a lot of good research that has shown that this is effective. And so I highly recommend after any episode of dizziness that you see a vestibular physical therapist or you start doing vestibular exercises. Um, to help retrain your brain to process all of that, all of that, um, all of that sensory disturbance or uh, weakness, the how the brain's processing sensory information. Um, so vestibular rehab and decreasing that visual dependence. So included in that vestibular rehab is going to be. Um, Exercises are going to help challenge the inner ear system and decrease your dependence on your vision. So you don't have to navigate this alone. I really highly suggest that you find professionals to help guide you through this to make sure that you are um, doing it correctly. Because if you, you know, pacing can be an important thing depending on the individual. Um, making sure your symptoms go away before you do another repetition so that your brain is able to adapt. And then just also guiding you along the way because. Um, you're going to have ups and downs with this, um, and some days are going to be better, some days are going to be worse, and having somebody to help guide you through that is going to make a big difference in your recovery. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel, feel, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me. Um, but uh, thank you for watching, and um, I'll catch you next time.